Good morning, it's just after 8.30 on Tuesday 2 Um, If I had really had my act together, this would have been a spirit day. I've seen some cute ideas of people wearing tutus, tie-dye, ties, things like that, but I don't have it together like that. Um, I am gonna talk to you now, cause I don't even know if I'll be able to talk to you later in the day, and I really don't know what this vlog is gonna look like this week, cause so much of my time will be spent like unavailable to vlog so um we'll see it might be a shorter one it might not i may find a way to do everything i or to do everything i need to do but still check in with you guys periodically so today um what my primary function is is to kind of get the kids set up for having a sub tomorrow as well as thursday tomorrow again i'm out for negotiations thursday i have a doctor's appointment right in the middle of the day and I've gone back and forth about like coming in and then leaving. And I just know from experience, like once you come here, it's very hard to like leave. Um, and I don't wanna be late for this doctor's appointment because it's a biopsy and I need to make sure I get that done. So I probably won't come in on Thursday. So I kind of need to get the class set up to be self-sufficient to some extent tomorrow and Thursday and then I'll be here on Friday but it's a rally day so there's not a whole lot of teaching that can occur on that day. So in history today we are going to read the section in our piloting textbook which is somewhere it's not with me but this is the textbook we're going to be we've adopted and we're going to start using next year and so I'm taking the opportunity of kind of playing around with it now so that next year I have a little bit of familiarity with it. So we are still on Manifest Destiny Westward Expansion and today we're just gonna read the section in the textbook that talks about the Louisiana Territory. This portion should be reviewed for my kids because we had already been talking about that. They know what the Louisiana Purchase was and what it did, so this is kind of like us backing up a little bit, but that's okay. So we're gonna read that section, and then there's a check for understanding. Let me see if I can show it to you guys. It looks like it's a game but I don't know. I Some of this I won't know until I'm actually doing it with my class, and this is one of those things. Um, it looks like it's, it's in game format, and what I think that I'm going to do is I'm going to take this as classwork credit, um, but again, I don't know for sure until I see it, so let me open up the right section and so again it's just me learning how to navigate this website there's all these slides that they give to you um almost there <laughs> and i don't even know if was it the text where okay sorry guys um yeah this wasn't where i saw it i think it was in the textbook that i saw this game next section okay so here it is um so they have this interactive interactive student textbook they don't have access to it because we haven't gotten the material so i made a packet for this unit of study and so we read the section on the louisiana purchase which looks like this they have access to to the digital textbook so that's what they'll be following along with are following along in as i'm reading it out of my actual book and then after that section, they do this check for understanding. And it looks like not, I don't know if game is the right word, but like a more hands-on activity just to kind of check for their understanding. So I'm gonna have them do that. And then I'm going to show one of the student videos. So I had different groups in class. Each group was assigned a um, an acted out scene. And the way, that this book is set up is you're supposed to act these scenarios out, these historical scenarios out as a whole class. And I think I mentioned once before when I read through it and the way that they wanted the class to do it, it was a little too uh, cheesy for my liking. So I just decided to break the class up into five groups because there are five different scenes. I let them pick their groups and they had to act out that historical moment that we were supposed to do as a whole group and they were provided with like a narration page so they had the information that they knew they needed to include so after technically i'm supposed to show that video first but because i don't know i just feel like it's better for me to read the section with the class and then show them a video interpretation of what they just read so that 
I know the video makes sense to them. So we're gonna watch the first one today and then we'll watch one each day. I think this will probably be the only one we get to see this week because I won't be here for the rest of the week. I've seen a few of them. Um, I saw the one that I'm showing today because I obviously wanted to watch it first. And then I saw the one that would be next, which is gonna be on Florida. And that is the group that made theirs you euphoria themed and I was very curious as to what that even meant but they did a really good job and um, I asked them if I could share it on social media and um, I need to check with their parents and if they say yes then I will um, and so that's what we're doing today we're reading this first section on the Louisiana Territory we're watching the group's interpretation in video format and then tomorrow yes tomorrow with the sub each group is going to create a five question multiple choice quiz based on their video and the section that they were focused on. And so they're being told to make the questions multiple choice. They have to develop the questions as well as, well as the answer choices and that the quiz wouldn't, shouldn't be super easy, but it also shouldn't be super hard. So we'll see how that goes. I've never done this before because again, this is all trial and error. Um, so that's the plan for history tomorrow. And I think that's all I need to say about history. And then in language arts, we are going to get them ready, or I am going to get them ready for their first read assignment, which will be given to them tomorrow uh, for blood, toil, tears, and sweat. There are three questions that I'm gonna have them answer. So we're gonna listen to the passage again, showing them the three questions, try and annotate for those three questions so that when they do the first read assignment on study sync tomorrow, if they were following along in class today, they should have text evidence and, ID and an idea of how they are going to respond to that. Now hopefully that doesn't take a lot of time because then I would like to move on to starting this book, Girl in the Blue Coat. I just finished reading this this morning. I've been listening to listening to it on Audible as I get ready. Um, and so I want to start this, but before we actually start reading the book, they need some background knowledge. So over the weekend I found a video that talks about what life was like in the Netherlands. Um, during World War II because this book is set in the Netherlands. And so there's some things they need to understand about what was going on in the country during that time for them to understand the story. So I found this video that is made by a history teacher that is from the Netherlands and he kind of gives a very brief synopsis of it. Um, it's longer than what I want. It's about, how long is it? 12 minutes long but it's valuable information and it's not gonna hurt them any. So his uh, channel is called History Hustle and he specifically focuses on the history of the Netherlands. So he has quite a few videos, has a good following, I think. I just saw 115,000 subscribers. So I'm gonna show them that. And then if there's time left, we'll actually start the book today. So yeah, that's the plan. And honestly, that may be the only concrete <laughs> teaching stuff that I show you today or even for the rest of the week because right after school today I have negotiations and I don't know how long that's going to take and then I need to make sure I have all my sub plans set and ready to go for the next two days so I don't even know you guys if you'll see me uh, the rest of the day I'm going to make every intention to do that um, but that's the plan so just getting them set up for the rest of the week and um keeping my fingers crossed that everything goes according to plan. So I have about 15 minutes of my prep left. I'm gonna use that time wisely. Get my sub plans together. And uh, that's, hello, it's five o'clock. 5.04, I'm leaving. Um, I think I have everything I need for two days worth of sub plans. It's not the fanciest thing in the world. But it is what it is. That's for Wednesday, that's for Thursday. It doesn't look like it's a whole lot, which makes me nervous, but I went through everything and they the sub has everything he needs. Um, a lot of what they're doing is digital. It's on study sync or it's on vocabulary or they already have the materials. So I'm just gonna trust that I'm truly prepared like I think that I am. Let me put you guys down for a second. <sighs> Had to get myself all zipped up. So um, as far as the day went, it went well. Let me put you here while I shut everything down. I got everything accomplished that absolutely needed to be accomplished so that the kids in the class are set up for tomorrow. 
we got through the history lesson with TCI, which is the book that we're trying out. We watched our first acted out video in both classes. In the first class, there was like a technical issue. I had seen the video that the students created before and it played just fine. But then when I played it in school today, like the, the image was all scrambled and you could hear the audio, but you couldn't see the image clearly. So of course the kids in that group were devastated there for a second. And then um, they just reshared it with me and then that worked for whatever reason. I don't know why that happened. And in the second class, everything worked fine. So we did that um, and then we talked about blood, toil, tears, and sweat. I showed them the questions that they're going to be answered or asked tomorrow on Study Sync. We discussed, annotated all of that. And um, then we watched the background video on um, what life was like in the Netherlands during World War II to get us prepared to read The Girl in the Blue Coat. We started it, but literally only read two pages. The very first chapter, I think it is, is only two pages long. And that's as far as we got. And miraculously, both classes at this moment are in the exact same spot um, as each other. And then after school, I had negotiations. It was quick this time around. We had to present. We're in agreement on several things, but then not in agreement in other things. Um, so we did that. And then I finished that and made sure everything was good to go with my sub plans. And now I'm going to leave and be out until Friday. And I have a lot of anxiety about that because I'm like losing a certain amount of control, but there's nothing I can do. Um, so I'm gonna go home, it's cold, it's rainy, and I'm gonna enter some grades, which is what I've been meaning to do, but I just haven't had time. So I'm gonna do that from the comfort of my own home and eat. I don't have to cook, I don't have to exercise. It's gonna be amazing, my house is clean because the cleaning lady came today. Um, and then I wanna, sh I feel bad. Guys, um, when the summer comes, especially as we get closer to the school year, if you hear me utter the words, I found this cute teacher bag and I need to buy it, you're all just really gonna need to stop me because I have switched my bag again. I started the school year with a brand new bag that I bought from Ubuntu, I think was the name of the company. Carried that for several, weeks and then for the past few weeks I've been carrying another bag that I bought a couple summers ago and I stopped carrying that and now I'm back to this one. This one I've had for a while. I carried this one my last couple years of elementary school and if I were to be honest this actually is the best teacher bag I've ever had just because of the capacity and the length of the handles. So this is a Herschel bag and what makes it really nice is you can't see it but on the inside, there's this bag organizer. See this right here? This came from Amazon. And that's what makes the bag perfect because I can put my empty coffee cup here, my camera is here, my water bottle is there, and then still have room for stuff that I actually need to carry. It's a little full right now because I have to take these papers home to enter those grades, but it's not normally gonna be that full. And um, the reason why I stopped carrying the last bag that I really like is that it just doesn't like the capacity for it to be wide. It's just not there. So at the end of the day, when I need to put my water bottle in there and start carrying things home, I cannot because it's too narrow. So I'm carrying a lot of things, which did not make me happy. So um, right now on this day, I'm saying this is the bag that I'm gonna carry for a while. And right now I'm saying I don't need another teacher bag. So I won't get one. And those other two bags, technically I use them as teacher bags, but they could be used for other purposes as well. And that is now me justifying those purchases. But um, that's all I have to say for today. So I'm gonna go home, I have to get gas, and um, do all the things I just said I was gonna do. So I will check in tomorrow. Again, tomorrow may be very brief and very light because we're negotiating. So, but I'll try and at least say hi. See you.
morning. It's 10, 20-ish on Wednesday. I'm losing track of my days because it was it's a short week. Um, and I just picked up my Starbucks. I'm a little nervous about it because it looks a little dark, so I don't know if it's gonna taste right. I'll taste that in a second. I have to work myself up to it because I'm really dreading it. Um, but I had a meeting today at eight. District presented their most recent proposal. And then we had a break from, I, that took about a half hour or so from 8.30 until now, um, which left me enough time to make some breakfast. And then I left and I actually went to school just to join my leadership class because that class happens from nine to 9.50. And because the rally is Friday and I'm a little panicked, I wanted to go to that class and run through the rally at least once with them. They have rehearsals after school today with Miss Lawrence, but I, for my own peace of mind, just kind of need to see where they're at. They're getting there. <laughs> um, and then I left, came here to get this Starbucks, and now I'm going to my colleague's house, which is where we typically negotiate. We all just had the eight o'clock meeting from, my house, from our houses this morning because the district was presenting. So we did that from our house, but now we're meeting up because then we have to respond. And I think we're supposed to do that at 1230. So we need a couple hours to kind of gather our notes, our thoughts, our charts and whatnot. So um, yeah, I'm just here to say good morning. Since this is a negotiations day, I don't know if you'll see me much more after this, um, but let's do this taste test. I'm really nervous. It's just when it's dark, it's never a good thing. And sometimes it's just dark because it's not mixed. Mm. It's not bad. It's, 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 it's not bad. I think it's just not mixed. So I got some extra ice because they put like two ice cubes in there um but yeah on a scale of one to ten i'm giving that one like a 7.5 it's a 7.5 so let me go i'll talk to you guys later hello it is thursday it is about 11 30. i'm at home because i have my doctor's appointment today in a couple of hours um i didn't check in after my coffee taste test yesterday because um once again when we finished negotiating i think i left at probably four, a little after four. I was just like mentally exhausted. I had nothing else to say. It's so weird because those days leave me just feeling completely like spent of all mental capacity. So I came home and literally just did not much of anything. There were a couple of things I had to do, like some emails I had to send for leadership purposes, but then that was it. And then I woke up this morning, I took an Orange Theory class at 8.45. I came home, showered, I just ate, and now I've decided um, I have a little bit of time before my doctor's appointment. It's at one o'clock. I'm gonna try and cook one or two Green Chef meals for next week and um, try and get that done. Uh, I have to admit, I have a lot of anxiety about this doctor's appointment, more than what I expected. I, I don't even think I was expecting myself to feel anxious, but I definitely feel anxious, I think, because I don't really know what to expect. Um, I don't know if it's going to be uncomfortable, if I'm going to be uncomfortable after the fact. I'm, you know, obviously anxious about the results. So I'm just trying to busy myself um, and not think about it. <laughs> and, um, and I also need to stop by little caesars and order some pizza for tomorrow for the leadership kids so i'm just cooking right now i'm cooking one of the three meals from the latest shipment it's a um moroccan shrimp bisque i just started i don't know if i'll get through all three i'll definitely get through one maybe maybe two um but we'll see so I'll probably check in with you after my doctor's appointment. Just kind of let you know how it went just for educational purposes in case you have to do this yourself. And then I don't know how much more I'll talk after that because I don't really know what mood I'm going to be in or how comfortable I'm going to be. But I definitely want to say hello today and let you know that yesterday was fine. We're still not done. <laughs> we're close, but we're not done. So we'll be meeting again at some point next week, I'm sure. So let me get back to cooking. 2.35, I just finished my biopsy. Um, my appointment was at one. 
and I just talked about it a little bit on Instagram. I'm going to try and not be redundant here because I know that a lot of you are on Instagram following me as well, but not all of you. So the whole process from start to finish took an hour and a half. The biopsy itself, I think, was maybe a 10-minute process. Um, and it was done with a needle. It was a needle guided. I just hit the curb. A needle guided biopsy. Um, and it wasn't the most painful thing I've experienced, but it was uncomfortable for sure. Because uh, the lump that they're looking at is right on my nipples, so that hurts. And then there was a lot of bleeding also because of where it's at. So they gave me an ice pack um, that I'm wearing now and told me to, you know, take Tylenol to ease any discomfort. No heavy lifting on my left side. That I can expect bruising later, so not to be alarmed by that. And there was something else I was going to say. Oh, and then I had a, a gentle mammogram afterwards that came back fine. What I didn't know is that in the process of doing a mammogram, that they, they insert like a clip or a chip. I forget which one they said it was. Um, inside and it's just in there. So that should the results come back and it is cancerous, they know exactly where to look. Um, but I wasn't, like I need to get some clarification because I don't know if it's in there Actually, I guess it's in there permanently. I don't know. Like, is it in there until... No, I, I think it would be in there permanently because let's say they put it in there and the results are like, everything's fine. I don't think they're going to have you come in for an appointment to remove what they've inserted. So that just wasn't even something I was aware of. And it's, <laughs> it's kind of creepy to just know that there's something in your body that's just now there. Um... So I'm gonna go to Target right now and I'm gonna get some Tylenol to alleviate any discomfort because I cannot use ibuprofen or Advil and that is all that I ever have at home. And I'm just gonna rest. Um, I just kind of wanna take it easy I'm, and ice it. I'm supposed to ice it every couple of hours, I think my paperwork says. Place a cold ice pack over the biopsy site for 30 minutes and then remove ice pack for 30 minutes. Alternate this for about six hours or however long it takes. So I want to do that so that tomorrow when I'm at, back at work, I've hopefully mitigated some of the pain and discomfort. Um, so I was supposed to maybe meet up with Liza and Taylor and another friend of ours for dinner. But I just told them I don't think I'm up to that today. And I was even going to see about getting a manicure, but I'm also not up to that either. Because I, I don't want to be somewhere that's going to prevent me from being able to ice and just kind of rest if I start to feel very uncomfortable. So that's what I'm going to do right now is to get some Tylenol and go home and I don't know. Maybe I'll get like a little Starbucks to go on my lunch. Maybe I won't. Um, and then there's still some stuff I need to do. Oh, I got to order the pizza. And there's some other things that I need to do for leadership and I'm swear to God when 2 30 tomorrow comes I need to celebrate because although the month of February is not over it is just going to be a relief that it's almost over because this month was something I was dreading and this month has kicked my butt and I just want to celebrate the fact that I survived it in one piece and I can't do that until about 2 30 tomorrow when this rally has happened and I'm going to proclaim it to be a success but still so, <laughs> I'm going to stop talking for today. <laughs> I'm just going to stop. Um, but yeah, as far as the biopsy was concerned, um, I'm glad I did it. I'm glad I'm going to get some answers. Not the most painful thing I experienced, like I said, but still quite uncomfortable. Um, a lot of bleeding because where it was at. And um, so now I'm just going to try and focus on making sure I take care of myself in the aftermath of that. So I will see you guys tomorrow. I don't know how much you're going to see me tomorrow because I just have a feeling that once I set my foot on campus, it's just going to be a flurry of scrambling around, making sure I'm ready for the rally and the kids are ready. And then the whole day will be focused on the rally. And I think that you'll see me when all that's done and I'm looking beat down and tattered. So 
that's when I will see you. I will see you then. <laughs> Bye. <sighs> Good morning, it's Friday. It's 7-Eleven. I just picked up Starbucks. I'm on duty this week. Let's taste it. That's a nine. You know, I'm gonna give it a 10. Um, I just picked up the Starbucks and now I'm about to go pick up the donuts for Taylor and I because I just feel like I deserve a donut uh, for getting to Friday. Taylor deserves a donut because she has really been the real MVP this week with covering my leadership practices and she's a great partner and it's Friday. So there's multiple reasons there. And so I'm gonna get us both a sprinkle donut and then I'm gonna head to school and let the craziness begin. So I was up until 11 o'clock last night doing something for leadership that I really hope ends up being worth it. And if it's not worth it, I'm gonna be really upset, but you know, it is what it is. So we have a rally today. It's a delayed Valentine's themed rally, the loose, uh, theme is the Bachelorette. Our school mascot is looking for, you know, a Valentine because they didn't have the greatest Valentine. And that's as far as it goes. They're not doing anything inappropriate going on one-on-ones or whatever the case may be. Um, and this year we started the house system at my school. That's something that eighth grade leadership has been kicking off. It's, it's, it's started. There's a lot of growth opportunity there. Um, and one of the things we need to grow on is just really getting kids attached to their house membership and and teachers as well. And so the first rally we had, they were not, they were just seated by class, which is what we normally do. Um, but starting with this rally and hopefully going forward, as long as I'm there, they're going to be seated by their houses to promote like the idea of like meeting new friends, meeting kids from different grade levels, different classes, etc. Seeing who else is in your house. Um, and in order to do that and feel like for the most part it's happening, we have to control seating the students. So that means instead of teachers just arriving to the rally with their class, leadership students are going to pick up groups of students and escort them to the rally. But in order for that to happen, I first needed to know who all was going to this rally out of the school of 1200 because this is what is called a renaissance rally. So you have to have a 3.0 or higher to attend this rally. And then step two, not only did I need to know who was going or who's invited to the rally, but also what class they're in, which is not that difficult because that's something the school secretary sends to us. But then on top of that, I needed to know the house of each student attending the rally which I already know because it's in multiple places. It's in a um, Google spreadsheet that we have. It's also on Five Star, which is the platform that we use to track points, but it wasn't in this report that was sent to me by the secretary. And I just didn't have time to sit down with someone to figure out, can we merge the two or can we run a, I don't know. I'm, I just feel like there's some way for me to get one report that does both of those things at the same time, but I didn't have enough time to research, investigate and all of that. Um, and that might be a good question for me to ask the five-star rep. Like, I wonder if there's a report that shows a student's GPA, homeroom teacher, and um, house membership all at the same time. So essentially what I was doing from about five o'clock to 11 o'clock last night was looking up every student that's on the list to go to the rally, which again, the school is 1,200, and let's say maybe 300 kids aren't going because they didn't hit the GPA mark. Um, manually looking up each student that is attending the rally so having the five star window open and then next to it having the google spreadsheet looking up their house membership and then having to go and type it on the excel spreadsheet so that today when it's time for the rallies i can send the escorts to the class and say you're picking up people from isabindi you're picking up people from altruismo etc that's what I was doing from 5-ish to 11 while icing my left breast and trying to manage that. Um, as far as that's concerned, it, it, it feels better. It's not 
Um, last night I felt like when I went to bed, like the Tylenol that I took was wearing off, so it was a little uncomfortable, a little bit more uncomfortable than what it had been. Um, I iced it a little bit, and so I'm okay. Um, it's not something that's going to prevent me from working. I do just feel like I need to be careful, and I'm wearing one of my. Um, it's not a sports. It's technically not a sports bra. It's more like, but it's designed like a sports bra that I got from Harper Wild over the summer just because it, th these are just more comfortable and it's less like pressure push on me. So there's that. And then I also found out from some people on Instagram that yes, when you get a biopsy, they will put like a little clip inside of you and it will stay there regardless of what your results are. And that is standard in case anybody has to go through a biopsy and has the same question I had. Um, that is what I learned. So that wraps up what I did last night. What I'm doing right now, going to get some donuts. One donut for me, one donut for Taylor. And then we're just gonna see how the day goes. I did wake up with some anxiety because I'm like, dear God, let everything run smoothly. I hope that we are as prepared as we can be. Um, and that's just the name of the game when I think I have a rally. That's just how it's gonna be. So, I'm gonna try my best to vlog to some extent, but again, I'll be around kids most of the day, if not all of the day, so it will be limited as to what I can do. And I may not even remember that I vlog during the course of this day, because I'll be so consumed with the rally itself. I dressed warmly, which is why I'm wearing gloves. It's really not that cold out, but I'll be outside all day. And once my fingertips get cold, it's game over, so I'm just trying to stay, keep as warm as possible. So I'm almost at the donut shop. See you soon. Hi. <laughs> it's 4 30. Uh, the rally is over. And I feel really bad because I don't feel like I'm going to be ending this vlog on a positive note. Um, the day was busy like I expected. I obviously didn't have time to check in at all. The rally was done. There were some logistical things that I found frustrating, um, but other teachers on campus have been very nice and said that they enjoyed it, um, that they saw an improvement from the first one to the second one. Um, all positive feedback. <laughs> one teacher asked me how the rally was and I said something like, I heard it was really nice. And she said, oh, you weren't there? And I was like, no, I was there. I'm just looking at it through a different lens, so I'm very critical of it. Um, but overall, I, I would say it was a success with the exception of the things that I think we could have done better with. Um, and so as a class, we'll debrief on Monday. Um, and you would think that I would have this overwhelming sense of relief, uh, but I don't. And when I woke up this morning, I just woke up with like chest pains, like anxiety is what it is. And I thought, oh, you just need to get through the end of the day. You need to get through the rally and it'll be fine. And I got through both rallies and the end of the day is here in terms of work. And I still don't feel fine. Like I feel just like weighed down, even to the point where I feel emotional about it because it, I'm frustrated. Um, and I think right now the issue is, is I just feel very, um, Um, disheartened by education in certain ways, like in general, like I think it's been a rough two years, obviously with COVID, um, but it's been just really rough listening, like seeing crazy board meetings across the country in my own district with parents saying just like crazy things and attacking the school system and public education and teachers and administrators and all of that. Um, just hearing all the different bills that states are passing that are just so like ridiculous and to me just go against just the idea of treating people with humanity and kindness whether or not you agree with their life or not to the point where you can't even like fathom that people should just be treated decently as people. Um, and then realizing that within each district and each school site that you may be working with people that feel the same way um, and that they're interacting with students that they really aren't there for or advocating for and realizing that there's nothing I can do about it. 
like immediately. There's nothing immediately I can do about it. Um, and the reason I came to teaching, like I like I've said before, and in previous videos, and like even now, I just feel myself getting emotional because I'm just that frustrated by it all right now. Like I came to teaching later in the sense that I didn't go to college and think I was going to teach. And then when I graduated from college, I didn't even think about teaching. I was in my late 20s when I thought I was going to do it, which is kind of late, at least in this area. A lot of people started teaching at 22. Um, but one of the reasons that drew me to teaching is because I wanted to make sure students that were maybe unseen, unheard, um, disregarded, not valued, had at least a teacher in me that saw them, heard them, valued them in ways that maybe they hadn't before. And I think I like to assume that all teachers and all people in education are functioning from that place, but there are times where it doesn't feel like that's the case and or that there's not enough teachers that are willing to advocate for what is right and what is wrong in terms of just treating people and students with kindness and dignity and respecting the fact that students are students, but students are also people. Um, and not always feeling like the powers that be are willing to kind of put themselves out there to advocate for that as well. And to feel like you're fighting like the quote unquote good fight, but that you feel like you're fighting it either alone or in a very small population of teachers and nothing is going to change. And I think that's what I feel today for a variety of reasons. And that is like weighing heavy on me, which is preventing me from feeling this sense of like relief <laughs> on a Friday after a rally. So, um, and I don't know what to do with that. Like, I don't know how to solve that. I don't know how to alleviate myself of that. Um, I want to walk out of here and feel lighthearted and relaxed and ready for a weekend where I don't actually have to work, but I don't know that I will. I don't know how to fix it. So it sucks. <laughs> so, um, with that depressing statement, <laughs> I'm going to go home and just try and sit through it, <laughs> figure it out find something to distract me if I can, um, and hope for the best. So, if you enjoyed today's vlog, despite the downturn of an end, please give this a thumbs up. Um, if you're feeling the same and have, or have felt the same at some point, feel free to give it a thumbs up. Um, feel free to leave a comment as well. If you are not subscribed, make sure you subscribe. And if you're not following me on Instagram or TikTok, follow me over there at Smarty Style. And as always, I hope that you guys are well. And if you're not well, please be well. And I will see you guys for a new week, hopefully a fresh week, with a new attitude of sorts on Monday. So I will see you guys then. Have a good weekend or have a good day. See you Monday.